Hi everyone, it's Chaplain April. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video um, just to tell the difference between um, preaching and teaching. So some of you that have watched my videos um, a lot, I've only been doing this for four months, but um, I kind of have the same style in every video. I just want to make the distinction that I am teaching rather than preaching. And there is a difference. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that. So I wanted to read this scripture in Ephesians 4.11. It says, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. So a lot of people, uh, Christians, know that as the quote-unquote five hopefold ministry. You know, so you have apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers and teachers, pastors. So uh, evangelist is someone like Reinhard, Reinhard Bonnke that goes and does crusades all over the world. Their goal is to, you know, get people saved as much as possible and go to remote parts of the world and stuff and bring the gospel that people haven't heard or they don't have a lot of it and then um, prophets someone that God will tell things to before he does them on the earth or and he might speak things through them um, as a warning to the church or anything like that famous prophet that recent uh, modern day prophet was um, Kim Clement who recently passed away um, but the, you know there's examples of prophets all through the Bible especially the Old Testament so that's another thing. Apostles, my dad called himself an apostle, uh, you know, so it's like the 12 disciples or apostles. They followed Jesus, they did what he was wanting them to do, uh, which was to go out and, you know, spread the good news. But apostles, um, I think in the definition, it means more someone that is going to go and establish churches. So that's kind of what my dad wanted to do. So, you know, he established this church in Costa Rica. He wanted to establish churches other places, um, even here in the States and a couple of different places. So that's an apostle. And then we all know what a pastor is. It's a shepherd, someone that shepherds a flock of people. So um, they are supposed to be steering the sheep, you know, where the people are the sheep and the shepherd steers them and, you know, instructs them and everything. And then a teacher is more like more like an instructor. Um, I'm gonna read here the differences between preaching and teaching. Preaching and teaching have a certain amount of similarities, but we must be clear: preaching is not teaching, and teaching is not preaching. Preaching appears in the Bible as a relaying of what God has said about Himself and His doings, and about men in relation to Him plus a pressing of his commands, promises, warnings, and assurances with a view to winning the hearer or hearers to a positive response. Preaching is the act of proclamation. Preaching has the goal of heralding the truth of God's word. In 2 Timothy 4.2, it says to act as a herald and make an official announcement to proclaim aloud to make public declarations. So teaching, although is similar to preaching, there are differences that must be noted. Teaching imparts truth to people, but the act and the context will look and feel differently. There's Greek words, so there's even a Greek word for preaching and it's different for teaching. It means to tell someone what to do, to instruct, to provide instruction in a formal setting. The work of teaching is less heralding and more discipleship oriented. Teaching is mainly the class classroom style of imparting knowledge and seeking to apply it while making sure the student understands the truth. When teachers teach the truth, there's often a lecturing element to the event. Oftentimes there will be a discussion element involved in teaching that provides immediate and on-the-spot feedback that's missing from the context of a sermon. In the teaching setting, other outside tools such as laser pointers, media devices, audio or video clips, and various other tools are employed to drive home the truth. These elements are often missing from the preaching event. So if I were to talk about some well-known people, okay, so Joyce Meyer, um, I see her more as a teacher, and someone like Joel Osteen, he's more of a preacher. So I don't know if you know, I'm getting across the difference here because there is a lot of overlapping. There's a lot of overlapping between preaching and teaching, but there's a need for both. So in a church, you should have both. Like um, if you have a small group, if you go to church, you listen to the sermons, you listen to the pastor preach. 
uh, and then you go to your small group and you listen to your small group leader teach. Um, but there all are also people that teach in a pulpit. So well, we need all of it. We need preaching, we need teaching, we need all aspects of the ministry. All pastors are called to be teachers in Ephesians 4.11. In every sermon there must be teaching. There is a natural and healthy overlap between preaching and teaching. Not everyone who teaches will make a good preacher. Not everyone who is skilled in the pulpit will make a good teacher. It's often true that people find their calling and giftedness leading them to spend their primary attention on one of the two as opposed to both preaching and teaching. Those individuals typically are not called to be the primary preachers in the life of the church. Many preachers who are obviously skilled in the pulpit are not as skilled in areas of formal classroom instruction or written communication, but there's always a natural and necessary overlap at some level. Teachers who, who never preach are often boring, commentary style, dry, dull, and lifeless communicators. It's one thing to know the truth, but quite a different thing to communicate the truth effectively. There must be an overlap between the preaching and teaching worlds and the hearts and minds of those given to this calling in the church. Apparently, Paul and Barnabas were engaged in both teaching and preaching in Acts 5.42 and 15.35. And it was saying, the preacher who never teaches will fill his sermons with cliches, jokes, and shocking statements and often cause people to remember the fact as opposed to the truth. So, um, I just want to put this out there that I feel like I have the gift of teaching and not necessarily preaching even though some of the things I say might sound preachy but that's why I am I have a Bible on the table and I'm looking the scriptures up because I want it to be more like a Bible study a teaching for you guys and that's what I always call it uh, so that you can either get your Bible and follow along follow along and then um, so it's my my job to um, teach the scriptures um, and you know all of that so I just wanted to clarify that and so you guys won't be expecting to hear a sermon um, you know sermons are put together in certain ways even when you go to um, when you go to the uh, seminary you know you take hermeneutics and all these things to learn how to teach I never took that not that I I mean I could have but um, so I never learned that but there are ways that sermons are put together it's kind of like writing a book in a way you're gonna have an intro three points and a conclusion basically and then you're going to have a few scriptures peppered there throughout uh, with uh, teaching if you'll notice I'm not just focusing on one or two scriptures and having stories surrounding those I might have five scriptures so there is a difference you guys can go on a line and look it up yourselves and you'll see that there is a difference but there's also overlap uh, like I have taken um, a ministry test I've taken several one of them I came out of the test as a shepherd so I don't know what um, test that was I have no idea I can't even remember when it was or what the name of it was um, so I don't know if that test even had teaching in it, but I came out as a shepherd. So that's kind of even what a chaplain does um, to shepherd people wherever they're at. If they're at the um, hospital or in hospice, you're kind of a shepherd. Um, but a pastor, a pastor is shepherding an entire flock of people, which is the church. So just so you guys know those little bit of differences and so that you won't expect something that I'm not going to give, that I'm not going to deliver. Uh, I mean, I guess I could stand behind a pulpit and do this, but I'm not necessarily preaching. I just want you guys to know. Um, and so I really feel like, and my mentor also feels like that my gifting is more in teaching. So that's what I'm just gonna continue doing and I'll continue calling it that. And I want it to be more like an informal Bible study. I mean, maybe someday I will stand up and see how that works. But, but it is kind of like we're just studying. We want to get del delve in and study the scriptures. So uh, I hope that helps to clarify this. And because I have had a few comments. Um, and we will look at these ministry gifts more in depth at a later time. So just keep all of this in mind and you guys continue to do what you're doing. You guys are great. Awesome. God loves you. And uh, next teaching is going to be on the fruit of the spirit of joy. Take care.